Now, still thinking about the nephron, I want to think about the nature of glomerular filtration, reabsorption, and tubular secretion. So, as usual, we'll draw a diagram. So, here we have the uh, afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole and the glomerulus, which is the ball of capillaries. So, afferent arteriole there. Efferent arteriole over here. And the ball of capillaries, which is the glomerulus. And round about that we have the Bowman's capsule. And I'm just going to draw a very, very simplified nephron. So this would be the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henley, just a very simplified one. The ascending tubule, the second convoluted tubule. As we know, the uh, second convoluted tubule area of the nephron visits the afferent arteriole, but in this simplified diagram, we'll just connect it up to the um, collecting duct. So in essence, what is happening? Well, the blood is entering via the afferent arteriole. And of course, if you think about it, this has got to be a branch from the renal artery. So this actually branches off from a branch of the renal artery. So this will be a branch of renal artery. There is a video in this series where we do the blood supply in more anatomical detail. But the renal artery gives rise to the blood going through the afferent arteriole. That's going to go round the capillaries of the glomerulus, leaving via the efferent arteriole. Now the process of ultrafiltration is taking place from the capillaries of the gemellulus through into the gemellulus space or Bowman space. This gemellular filtrate is going to go down into the proximal tubule, way down to the loop of Henle, back up again in the ascending tubule, around the distal convoluted tubule, then entering the collecting duct and after quite a bit of collecting duct this is going to drain into one of the renal calyces. So anything that comes out here into the renal calyces is going to be urine. Now we notice that there's an afferent arteriole and an efferent arteriole. So that's an efferent arteriole. It's not a venule. And the reason it's called an arteriole is what happens, in essence, is that this arteriole leaves the glomerulus. The arteriole goes down to the nephron and breaks into a large series of capillaries. I'll just draw a couple of capillaries here. These are called the peritubular capillaries because they wrap around the tubule. Now just to make sure we've got this, let's, uh, let's colour it in a bit. So here we've got the afferent arteriole, the gemellulus, the efferent arteriole. So the blood is coming down from the efferent arteriole into these capillaries, the peritubular capillaries. So all these red arrows are inside the capillaries. 
wrapping themselves around in a complicated way. Wrapping themselves around the tubule of the nephron. And just to clarify, I'm going to put some black arrows in. So the black arrows are the tubule and the red arrows are the capillaries of the peritubular capillaries. Now you probably know that every day in a young fit adult, young fit man anyway, we're forming about 180 litres a day of glomerular filtrate. So every day this process of ultrafiltration is filtering 180 litres of glomerular filtrate with the dissolved solutes into the glomerular space and 180 litres starts this journey down into the nephron. 180 litres a day. But then as this material goes through the nephron what happens is most of it, most of the water especially, is going to be reabsorbed. So from the nephron into the peritubule capillaries, there's going to be this process of reabsorption. So there's reabsorption. And on an average day, you might pass, say, two litres of urine. Let's suppose it's a two litre of urine day. So two litres of urine a day comes out in urine. So 180 litres of glomerular filtrate were formed, but only two litres of urine comes out at the end of the day. I think that means there's one, seven, eight litres a day of water is going to be reabsorbed from the nephron into the peritubular capillary. And it's very neat because the water's taken from this capillary here, then as this vessel continues, the water's reabsorbed homeostatically, just the right amount is reabsorbed, into the peritubular capillaries. And of course, the fine tuning of the water reabsorption is facilitated by the action of the antidiuretic hormone produced in the neurohypophysis of the pituitary gland, that is the posterior lobe. So just to finish this story off, the glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed, or a lot of the water is reabsorbed, and that goes into the peritubular capillaries. Then these carry the blood away from the nephron and these join a branch of which vessel are these going to join? This of course is going to be a branch of the renal vein. Only now are we into venous vessels. So just to review the flow of blood in very simplified form, blood from the renal artery goes into the afferent arteriole through the gemellulus, the ultrafiltrate is formed, goes into the nephron. The efferent arteriole carrying blood away from the gemellulus goes on to form the peritubular capillaries, facilitating the process of reabsorption. But at the same time, actually, there's another process called tubular secretion. So some material does go from the capillary into the tubule. So tubular reabsorption is taking fluid from the tubule into the capillary and tubular secretion is taking material from the capillary 
into the tubule. That does happen to some extent. Again, for homeostatic reasons. But in terms of water, nearly all the water is reabsorbed. Goes back into the peritubular capillaries, drains back into the renal vein, and the renal vein goes back into the inferior vena cava.